In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all the testimonies we have heard. We are asking, O oh Lord, you repeat all these testimonies in every life in Jesus' name. We pray that you grant your people the victory. Victory all around and victory everywhere in Jesus' name. At home, victory. At work, victory. On the road, victory. In every circumstance and situation, victory in Jesus' name. Lead us right now into your word and connect us with power as in the olden days. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. And I read to you from verse 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Joash the Abiezerite, and his son Gideon threshed the wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, and because of your faith in him to receive forgiveness and to receive salvation, redemption, eternal life, the Lord is with you. In verse 14, and the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? Chapter 7, verse 7. It says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred that latch will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. Deliver the Midianites into thine hand. The day of victory has come for you. And you'll see victory every area of your life in Jesus' name spiritual Midianites you will conquer. All the Midianites that may come against your personal life, your physical life, your domestic life, your professional life and everything the Lord has raised you up for, you are going to win, you are going to conquer in Jesus name. In verse 14 and his fellow answered and said, this is nothing else save that is except the son of Gideon the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand as God delivered Midian and all the hosts. We come to chapter 8. As Gideon then began to pursue, even though he was tired, he kept on pursuing. You will not be tired. You will not faint. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up as we with wings as eagles. They will run, they will not be weary. And they will walk, they will not faint. We're looking at chapter 8 and verse 4. Judges chapter 8 verse 4. And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over he and the 300 men that were with him, faint and yet pursuing faith and yet pursuing until the last Midianite was overthrown, overcome and conquered. Gideon never stopped. The faith yet pursuing. You will pursue until final victory has come in your life. Don't give up. Don't check out. Don't say I cannot take it anymore. Just a step, just a prayer, just a promise of the Lord and victory will be ascertained, confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, verse 13. 
and Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle before the sun was up. Before the sun was up, he had a whole day ahead of him now to rejoice and celebrate the victory. And then as we read verse 22, in verse 22, Then the men of Israel said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, but thou and thy son and thy son's sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. He had victory. He had total victory. On the basis of all this that I have read to you, when looking at the word of final authority and power over unconquerable enemies, final victory, final authority, final power over unconquerable enemies. For the children of Israel at the time of Gideon, the Midianites appeared unconquerable. They were afraid because of the great oppression. And it appeared they will be in servitude and slavery captivity all the days of their lives. But God raised up Gideon and God has raised you up. I said God has raised you up. This victory you are going to have without any shadow of doubt because the promises of God are yes and amen. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. The tougher the situation, the tougher you will be. The greater the problem, the greater authority and power you will have. And the greater challenge that may come to your life, the greater will be your understanding of the promise of God. And it says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. Verse 27, the eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. And the fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down, dear, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, a people saved by the Lord, thy, the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of the excellency? Thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee. The Lord is assuring you, as you go forth in life, as you go forth to fulfill the will of God and the calling of God upon your life, it says, your enemies shall be found liars unto you. And thou shalt tread upon their high places. Jeremiah chapter 15. Jeremiah chapter 15. We're reading from verse 11. Jeremiah 15, verse 11. As we look at all these promises, the proclamation of the mouth of the Lord, you want to mark them in your mind, in your heart. You want to store them in your heart, knowing that this is what the Lord has promised you. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 11. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Verse 20. And I will make thee, I will make thee unto this people. A first brazen wall, 
and they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. And I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. Those people or those spirits or whatever they are in conspiracy together that may want to destroy your life and destroy the plan and the purpose and the promise and the provision of the Lord for your life. The Lord will conquer them on your behalf. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Mr. Terrible will not catch you. Mrs. Terrible will not oppress you. The Lord will set you free and free completely for the rest of your life to do the will of God in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, we're looking at verse 17. Luke chapter 10. We're reading from verse 17 here. And the 17 returns again with joy. You're going back to your field of calling or to your ministry. You are, you are returning back to your profession and you are returning with joy. Joy of answered prayer. Joy of experienced miracle. The joy of salvation. And the joy of victory over every calamity and everything the devil might throw upon you. You are victorious already. It says, and the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Has he given me your weakness? Has he given me your fear? Has he given me your defeat? Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. There are some people that will say, enemies don't matter to Christians. In fact, they say the, the Christian has no enemy. But Jesus said, I give you power to walk or to tread on serpents and scorpions. And Jesus Christ, our Savior and Master, Jesus Christ, the personification of truth. He said, he gives you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, verse 20, it tells us it's a result of salvation. As a result of eternal life abiding in us. As a result of repenting of our sin, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thereby our names are written in the book of life. It says, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. There's a new name written, it is mine, oh yes, it is mine. And my sins forgiven, I will roam no more, now I'm on my way to heaven. You'll be on your way to heaven in Jesus' name. Final authority, final power over Unconquerable enemies. Three points we're going to look at before the prayer. Number one, God's protection from unrelenting enemies. Enemies that will not give up. Enemies that will say, I'll pursue him to the grave. Unrelenting. You have protection from them today. I said you have protection from them today. God's protection from unrelenting enemies. Number two, great progress despite unappeasable enemies. Enemies you cannot appease. Enemies you cannot beg. Enemies you cannot do anything to stop them because they are determined we will not be appeased. Unappeasable enemies. 
yet in spite of them, despite what they plan, despite all their bragging and their boast of power and authority, you have great progress, despite unappeasable enemies. Number three, glorious posture amidst unbending, unyielding enemies. What's the posture of the believer? What's the stance of the believer? What's the attitude of the believer? What's the faith of the believer? What's the conduct of the believer? When you are in the midst of enemies that will not bend or bulge or yield. Glorious posture amidst unbending, unyielding enemies. Number one, God's protection from unrelenting enemies. First of all, you need to understand that we ourselves individually or our enemies to God by our sins, by the evil in our hands, by our conduct and character, by the choices we made in life, born as sinners, living as sinners, fighting against the will of God and the word of God in our lives. We were enemies unto the Lord, but Jesus Christ died for us and he reconciled us unto the Father. And because of that reconciliation, we became children of God, sons and daughters of God. And as we become a son, a daughter of God, there might be people that set themselves against your life. And the Lord is saying, He'll protect you from them. Let's look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, I read from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commended His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's not you know, there's some people that feel I'll turn over a new leaf and then God will love me. God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. As a result of that love, salvation came to you. The gospel came to you. The preaching of the good news came unto you. And then you repented of your sin. You believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you are reconciled unto God. It says, but God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood. Is the blood of Jesus that washed away your sin? Is the blood of Jesus that covered you from the guilt and the condemnation and the damnation and the judgment to come? Because your redemption, the atonement, is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because he died for you, that's why you live now. Because he died for you, that is why you will not face eternal judgment anymore. That's the position of the true believer. That's the experience of the new believer. The salvation of the new believer is this much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, you see that, that's what I was telling you. We were enemies of God, against God, walking contrary to God, disobedient to God, sinful by nature and by choice and by practice. We were enemies, he says in verse 10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life, salvation. Uh, it comes by the grace of God. Uh, look at um, Ephesians chapter 2. We need to understand how we came into relationship with the Lord. Before that protection, contrary or against the enemy, that protection from the enemy, we ourselves, first of all, we come into the kingdom. We come to God, he becomes our father, and Jesus becomes our savior. 
And the Holy Ghost becomes our comforter, our helper, our guide, and our sustainer. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, as he quickened, is made you alive, who oh, are dead in trespasses and in sins. That was our old condition, our old situation. And that was the position where we were, where we were dead in sins and trespasses. Wherein, in time past, he walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. That's where we all started from. Or oh, children of disobedience, we didn't have the strength to obey God. We didn't even have the desire to obey God. We didn't have the, power, the, the ability to obey God. Or oh, children of disobedience. And then it says, among whom ye also, we also arch our conversation, our conduct, our character, our manner of life in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, we were by nature. You see that? We were by nature. Listen to this. We were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4, but God who is rich in mercy for his grace for his great love wherewith he loved us for he for when even when we were dead in sins has quickened us together with Christ what does that mean he raised up Christ from the dead and we were dead in sins and trespasses he raised us up together raised us into life Life in Christ, life in righteousness, life eternal. The same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, that same power came into our lives and it raised us up from spiritual death. And then in that verse 5, by grace are you saved. And he has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. For by grace are you saved through, uh, through faith. What's grace? It's a free gift of God, bringing salvation. What's grace? It's a free favor of God, bringing us into fellowship with the Father. What's grace? It is a free, undeserved mercy of God that brings us into reconciliation with the Father. And now He is a Father and we are His children because of His grace, the free favor of the Lord. That blots out all our sins in the past. It says, not by works, not of works. In verse 9, let's any man show both. For we are the workman, his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. That's the grace of God. Look at verse 12. That at that time, that's in the past, before you knew the Lord. At that time, that's when you were a sinner. At that time, when we were enemies of Christ, enemies of Calvary, enemies of the cross, enemies of righteousness, that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God, in the world but now a change has come but now grace has come into our lives but now the grace of God the sacrifice of Christ the blood of Christ that is shed on the cross of Calvary has made a total change all the past sins blotted out 
we now have the Spirit of God bearing witness in our hearts. We are children of God. Our sins are taken away. Forgiveness has come. His righteousness has been given unto us. And He makes us righteous in His beloved. He says, but now in Christ Jesus, he, ye who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one, and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. No separation again from the Almighty. No separation again from the commonwealth of Israel. No separation again from the inheritance of the saints, having abolished in verse 15 in his flesh. The enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, to make so making peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one, in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And he came and he proclaimed, he came and declared, he came and he preached peace unto you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, now that we are born again, now, therefore, now that we have eternal life, now, therefore, now that our sins are taken away, now, therefore, now that we become the children of God, now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. God. That's so we are. That's the reason why now He gives us protection, preservation. He gives us this great impenetrable umbrella over our heads, over our souls, over our personality, over our families. And now the enemies cannot touch you anymore. I said the enemies cannot touch you anymore. Look at Exodus. Chapter 19, see what has happened. What happened to the children of Israel? And what has happened to us? And after that, see the promise of the Lord. And see the provision of the Lord. And see the protection of the Lord. After they became peculiar people in the hands of the Almighty God. Peculiar citizens in the commonwealth of Israel. In chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then it shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. It shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Now that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now that you are reconciled, for the heavenly Father, through the sacrifice and through the social work of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says you are now a peculiar treasure unto me. Then it goes on in verse 6, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. A kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Look at the consequence of that now. We're looking at chapter 23, verse 22. Exodus 23, Exodus 23, we're looking at verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. Child of God, I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. The people who have made covenant with the Lord by the, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. All those who have sinned. Because when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's how they were saved. That's how we are saved. That when I see the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, without blemish, the blood of the one that died for us on the cross of Calvary. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Because you believe in that blood that was shed for you. 
you believe in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for you. It says, because of that, I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Verse 23, for mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the high Etites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them up. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. And you shall serve the Lord your God. You will serve the Lord. I said you will serve the Lord. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take. And I will take. And I will take. Sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young. Nor be barren in thy land. The number of of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. That's the promise of, that's the protection of the Lord that he grants his children and I pray that that protection will be yours in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 20. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, I'm reading here from verse 20. The Lord has set us up for victory. He has set us up for protection. He will preserve our lives. All the promises of God for the yes and amen in our lives. And there's no promise you are standing upon which you cannot claim today. For your soul, for your spirit, for your heart, for your mind, for your body, for your family, for your profession. The Lord has said, none of his promises will fail in our lives. And any enemy that will try to run you down, cut you down, destroy you, oppress you, the Lord will remove their power away from your life in Jesus' name. You know, the, we, we learn about this Jehoshaphat. The enemies came. This man was a good king, the king of Judah. He served the Lord. And the Lord had some good things about him. And the Lord gave him some great, great promises. But then some enemies thought they were going to get rid of him. Nobody will get rid of you. And nobody will destroy you. You are going to do everything the Lord has sent you to this world and to the church to do in Jesus' name. I'm looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Joshua stood and said, Hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in the Lord your God, you'll be established in Jesus' name. Established in his salvation. Established in holiness and righteousness. Established in the scriptures. Established in the grace of God. Established in the faith. Believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. Will not be like children who are tossed to and fro after every deceptive, uh, cunning, uh, craftiness of men. You'll be established in the truth. Establish in the word of God. Establish in the kingdom. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. And it's also said, believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. You will prosper. Every work of your hand will prosper in Jesus' name. In verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. After the Lord had given the promise, after the Lord has given the assurance, after the Lord has said, I'm going to conquer every enemy before you. What else are they going to do now? He appointed singers. They said, let's sing. 
Let's celebrate. Let's rejoice because of the promise of the Lord. He appointed singers unto the Lord. And then it says in verse 21, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Some people don't know that holiness is beautiful. They think holiness is ugly. They think holiness goes along with sorrow. It goes along with being gloomy. It goes along with being queer. It goes along with being odd. They don't understand. There's beauty in holiness. Holiness is beauty in the sight of the Lord. Holiness is be beautiful in the sight of the angels. Holiness is beautiful by the account of heaven. Holiness is beautiful by the people that have the nature of Christ in them. You love it. You appreciate it. You are excited by it. He said they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. And when, in verse 22, they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone held to destroy one another. The enemies destroyed themselves. They will not destroy you. I said they will not destroy you. The weapons they wanted to use on Jehoshaphat, the weapons they wanted to use on the people of God, the children of Judah, they used all those weapons on themselves. Your enemies, whatever weapons they have, the enemies they wanted to use on you to destroy you, they used those weapons on themselves in Jesus' name. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude and behold there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped and Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them and he found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped up for themselves it says more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoils. It was so much. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Barak, Barakar. And it goes on to say, for, they, for there they blessed the Lord Therefore, the name of the place was called the Valley of Beraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. That's what the Lord will do for you. As we believe the Lord and stand with the Lord and stay in the will and the word of the Lord, it will make you to rejoice over your enemies in Jesus' name. Verse 28, they came to Jerusalem with sub-trees and halves and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. They sang, they had the victory. You sing, you are going to have the victory. I said they sang, they had the victory. And you sing, you are going to have the victory. Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and verse 26. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. At midnight, 
midnight of captivity, at midnight, midnight of imprisonment, at midnight, the midnight of persecution, at midnight, the midnight of their pain, at midnight, the midnight of their suffering, at midnight, the midnight of their deprivation, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly, everybody say suddenly, let me hear you suddenly. Let me hear you suddenly. Never be surprised by the plans of the enemy because suddenly your deliverance will come. Suddenly your victory will come. Suddenly you will triumph over every enemy in Jesus' name. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the princes were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loose. You are loose and you are set free today in Jesus' name. Point number two now, point number two, great progress despite unappeasable enemies. If I have enemies, can I ever make any progress? Of course, of course. Your life is not in the hand of your enemies. Your progress is not in the hands of your enemies. The purpose of your creation and the purpose of your calling is not in the hands of your enemies. And your victory it's not determined by how mighty the enemy might be. How serious and determined your enemy might be. Your success in life, your triumph in life. It's not determined by how many the number of those enemies or the resources of those enemies. There is progress, there is provision in spite of and despite all those unappeasable enemies. I'm sure you remember the story of this a young man, his name is Joseph. The Lord showed him, was going to take him to the mountain top of leadership. And then his brother said, how can that be? Is second to the last in the family. And now he's going to become number one. And so they said, it will not be. But what God said will be, will be. What God said will be, will be. In your life, whatever God has planned, it will come to pass. Whatever God has purposed, it will come to pass. Whatever God has determined, it will come to pass. God has the final say. Pharaoh does not have the final say. Nebuchadnezzar does not have the final say. Herod does not have the final say. Your enemies do not have the final say. In your life, in your family, in your calling, God has the final say. And whatever God has ordained for your life, it will be in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 45, I'm reading from verse 4. Genesis chapter 45. And we're looking at it from verse 4. It says in verse 4, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. He said, every step of the way, I've seen the hand of God. Every problem that came up, I've seen the help of the Lord. It was the Lord that used everything because all things work together for good to those who are the called of God and those who are called according to his purpose. Thank God you are called according to his purpose. 
Many are called and few are chosen. He called you and you responded as a result of that response of faith and response of obedience unto the Lord. Everything will work together for good in your life in Jesus' name. He says, now therefore, in verse 5, now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. And let's look at the, uh, you know, chapter 50. Reading from chapter 50, verse 18. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 18, it says, And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. That's what they said will never happen. They said, On your dead body. You had a dream, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars, they all bowed down for you. What kind of dream is that? You had all the ships bound together in the field and then you had your own ship and then all our ships bowed down. To, what kind of dream is that? It said, we'll kill the dream and kill the dreamer. We'll kill the dream by killing the dreamer. Nobody will touch your life. Nobody will touch that dream. What God has planned and purpose in your life, nobody will touch it in Jesus' name. But you see, Joseph, he just knew that God will work it out. In your life, the Lord will work it out. In your family, the Lord will work it out. In your place of work, the Lord will work it out. You know, from now on, you just stay and relax because you're going to rejoice at the final end in Jesus' name. Look at that, verse 18. Behold, we be thy servants. I thought that's what you were fighting against. But now they came without Joseph forcing them. And he said, now we accept. Your enemies will accept it on the final day. Now we know. They will know it when that time comes. We are your servants. Verse 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. It will bring it to pass. In your life, it will bring it to pass. On every one of your children, it will bring it to pass. Because God will have the final say in your life. Final say in the life of your husband. Final say in the life of your wife. Final say in the life of your children. And that promise he has made unto you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Reading from verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. What are the blessings that will come on you? Look at verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Have you gone back home? I thought you'll say amen. Look at verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish you and holy people unto himself, 
as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall call thee, shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall call, they shall be afraid of you. Your enemies, whatever place they are on the planet earth, they'll be afraid of you in Jesus' name. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of your hand. All the work of your hand. All the work of your hand. Every area of your endeavor will be blessed in Jesus' name. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. The Lord shall make thee the hedge and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, the promise of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 30 of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, I'm reading from verse 6. How the blessings come, how that victory comes, how that victory and triumph over the enemy, how it comes, and how God fulfills his plan, his purpose in your life, in spite of the enemy, despite the enemies, how God still fulfills all his promises in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and, with, and that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. I'm waiting for your amen there. How will that happen? It tells us in verse 6. It says, verse 6 must come before verse 7. There are many people that say, I don't know why. I meet them in the dream. I meet them in the day. I move here, they hinder me. I move over there, they hinder me. There is something the Lord has said in verse 6. And it said, as a result... Of that oppression of the Spirit, oppression of His covenant in your heart, in your life, as a result of that oppression in verse 6, then verse 7 will take place. What's the oppression in verse 6? Look at that. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. The children of Israel, they knew one kind of circumcision, it was a fleshly circumcision. It will circumcise their flesh, the flesh of their foreskin. What they carried from Adam physically into this world, the Lord said, circumcise yourself. And they will take that extra flesh coming from Adam. They'll take that away from them. He said, that is a sign of my covenant with you. But now the Lord said, that physical, outward, external, fleshly circumcision was just a picture of the other circumcision I need to do in your life. We carried Adamic nature into this world, Adamic depravity into this world, the root of sin into this world, and the very energy and power of sin. We brought it into this world. In sin did my mother conceive me. In iniquity was I born. And apart from the outward sins we have committed, there is this inward depravity, the nature of Adam. And the Lord is saying, after you are saved, he wants to sanctify you. After you are forgiven, he wants to purify you. 
after you have got the first work of grace. He wants to do the second work of grace that is called the circumcision of the heart. And this is the work of the Lord himself. You see the physical circumcision. Other people can do that. Joshua circumcised the children of Israel who were born in the wilderness. He circumcised them at Gilgal. And Abraham circumcised his son on the eighth day. You see, that physical circumcision, men will do that. But this one, circumcision of the heart, the sanctification experience, the holiness of heart without which no man shall see the Lord. It says, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. That means that that circumcision of heart does not stop with that first generation. Sanctification does not stop with the first generation of members of the church. It goes on and on and on. Will circumcise the heart of thy seed. When the circumcision takes place, what's the result of that? What's the consequence of that? The consequence of sanctification. The consequence of purity of heart. The consequence of pure heart, holy heart, holy nature in the sight of the Lord. What's the consequence of that? To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. That's the abundant life that thou mayest live. Then verse 7 now, after that circumcision of heart, and the Lord thy God will put all these causes upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee, and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments which I command thee this day, and the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good for the Lord will again rejoice over you for good. As he rejoice over thy fathers, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of this law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, you'll prosper in Jesus' name. For Samuel chapter 2. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. Promotion. Despite the unappeasable enemies. Progress. Moving forward. Success. Victory. Despite unappeasable enemies. For Samuel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. And Anna prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Mine horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. Our salvation is very important. Eternal life, very important. Knowing the Lord, very important. It says because of the salvation of the Lord, eternal life, forgiveness of my sin. It says because... I come into this covenant with the Lord by the blood of the Lamb because of that salvation that the Holy Ghost is bearing witness in my heart. I'm a child of God. It says, My heart is rejoicing over my enemies. Look at verse 2 there is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of thy mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken. And they that stumbled are guarded with strength. He tells us in verse 8, He raises up the poor out of the dust. He will raise you up. And lifteth up the, the beggar from the donkey hill. He lifts you up from the donkey hill in Jesus' name. To set them among princes 
and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth at the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints. The Lord will keep you. You will not fall. You will not falter. You will not fail. He will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall it thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king. And exalt the horn of his anointed. The Lord will do that in your life. Make you stronger than your enemy. Make you greater than your enemy. Make you wiser than your enemy. He will fulfill it from this day forward in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your church, in our church, in Jesus' name. Psalm 105, verse 24. Psalm 105, verse 24. Psalm 105. Verse 24, I'm waiting for you. You need to mark this in your Bible because from today, there will be a fulfillment of this verse in your life. 105, verse 24, and he increases his people greatly. He will increase us greatly. And made them, and made them, and made them, Stronger than their enemies. Stronger than their enemies. You know why you fear an enemy? Because you think the enemy is stronger than you are. The enemy is greater than you are. His weapons of destruction, they are greater than, than your prayer, than your power, than your strength. But from this day, the Lord is saying, He will make you stronger than your enemies. Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 98. Psalm 119, reading from verse 98. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemy. Stronger, mightier, greater, now wiser. Thou hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Give me a good amen there. Yeah. For thy testimonies are my meditation. You meditate on the word of God. You'll be wise. Meditate on the word of God. You'll be strong. Meditate on the word of God. You'll be stronger, mightier, and you'll be greater. You'll be wiser than all your enemies. It says in verse, it says in verse 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Well, the assurance of the Lord is there. Great progress on your way from now on. Great victory on your way from now on. Point number three, glorious posture. Amidst unbending, unyielding enemies. The enemies that will not give up, no matter what, how you pray, no matter what you do, they will not give up. What's your posture? Because you know you are going to have the victory, and from this day, victory is assured in your life in Jesus' name. But what will your posture be? What will your attitude be? What will your character be? What will your conduct be? In the midst of those unbending, unyielding enemies. We're looking again at Genesis chapter... 
50. Genesis chapter 50. You must have the right attitude. You must not try to avenge yourself. You must not try to push like they push. You must not try to destroy like they want to destroy. You leave all that in the hands of the Almighty God. Genesis chapter 50 verse 18. In verse 18 it says, And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And he said, Behold, we be thy servants. Behold, we surrender. You know, Joseph grew up taking advantage of that at that time. Aha, uh -huh, now you know. Now you know who is ruining. Now you know he's in authority. Now you know who has power. Now you know who has the final say. No, he didn't say that. The posture of the believer. The attitude of the believer in the midst of those some bending or yielding enemies that you remain a child of God, meek and mighty, simple but single minded, sincere but sanctified, honest but holy, that you still remain in the position, in the posture the Lord has given you while those enemies, they realize their failure. Look at it, verse 19, and Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God as for you. Verse 20, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. You still know that your commission is to save people. It's to bring them to the knowledge of the grace of God. It's to bring them to the knowledge of that holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And you do that in your personal life. You do that with the declaration, the preaching of the word of God, as well as the way you live. Verse 21. Now, therefore, this is the picture of the labor. This is the attitude of the true believer. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you. And your little ones, and he comforted them and speak kindly unto them. That's your posture in the midst of the enemies. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 25. Proverbs chapter 25. Your posture, your attitude, your conduct, your character. In the midst of those some bending or yielding enemies. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 21. In verse 21 it says, If thine enemy be hungry, what do you do? Give him bread to eat. You see that? It's a believer. It's the one that knows after all. is helpless. is powerless. He cannot hurt me. After all, my victory is assured. After all, my progress is already confirmed in heaven forever, O oh Lord. Thy word, thy promise, the prophecy is settled in heaven. And because he knows it is settled in heaven, that's why, you know, you, you get angry at somebody because you think he's hurting me, he can hurt me. But when you realize he cannot hurt you, he's helpless. He needs your help. And he needs, you know, whatever you have. Then you don't get angry at him anymore. Because he says, if an enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. If he be, if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. Every good thing you do towards your enemy, the Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and here we're reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. In verse 17 it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Recompense to no enemy evil for evil. Recompense to no persecutor evil for evil. Recompense to no one evil for evil. When he talks about, you know, no man here is talking about your enemy. How about your friends? Of course, your friend might mistakenly do something that is, you know, not really proper. Recompense to no man, to no friend, to no one, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
if it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Thank God it will happen. I said, thank God it will happen. You'll be a peacemaker. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And when you realize that's who you are, your posture then changes, your attitude then changes. If it be possible, as much as it lies in you, live peaceably with all men, then live in love. Avenge not yourselves anytime. Avenge not yourselves with anyone. Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto all. For it is written, vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if an enemy hunger, feed him. The posture of the believer in the midst of enemies, the attitude, the action of the believers, the practice of believers, day to day in your community where you live in your local church where you are when there is a little bit of i don't understand what he has done i don't understand what he's saying don't do evil it says if your enemy be hungry feed him if he thirst give him drink for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Luke chapter 6, the very words of Jesus, the direct words of Jesus, what our posture is to be, what our attitude is to be, what our conduct is to be, in the midst of those unrelenting, unappeasable, on, on bending or yielding enemies. It tells us in Luke chapter 6 verse 27. Luke chapter 6 verse 27. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them that hate you, bless them that curse you. After all, you know that their cause is nothing. It's like the curse of Balaam. God will turn every cause into blessing. I said, God will turn every cause into blessing. Because of that, just bless them and pray for them with despitefully use you. And unto you that, and unto him that smited you on the one cheek, offer also the other. Don't isolate yourself. Don't say, they slapped me on the one cheek. I'm going to run away into a corner. If you do that, that's where, how you're going to have the success he wants you to have. They hurt me, I'm going to isolate myself. They hurt me, I will not talk to them anymore. Stay there and give them another opportunity to, to slap you on the other cheek. But remain a Christian, remain saved, remain righteous, remain holy, remain sanctified. No reaction, no anger, no fighting. The posture of the believer in the midst of those unbending or yielding enemies. And unto him that smited thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Because the Lord will provide more you can ever lose in Jesus' name. Verse 35, but love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of, your, of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. That's how God will bless you. And that's how you are going to have all these inheritance the Lord is promising you. When you keep the proper posture, righteous and holy, safe and sanctified in the midst of those enemies. It says in verse 36, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Don't ever fear. Don't be afraid. The Lord is on your side. I said the Lord is on your side. Philippians, Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. 
Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, verse 28. Yeah, it tells us, chapter 1 of Philippians, verse 27, only let your conversation, your posture, your attitude, your character, your manner of life, be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your fears that you stand fast in, the, in one spirit and with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing be terrified by your adversary. In nothing be terrified by your enemy. In nothing, in no situation, be terrified by your adversary because the Lord is on your side. The greater power is on your side. The greater provision is on your side. And the divine purpose of the Lord is on your side. And the Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. In nothing be terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token, sign, symbol of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. And let's look at this before we pray. Second Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm looking at verse 18. I'm waiting for you. This is so good and this is yours. I need to mark this in your Bible. Mark this in your mind. It says, chapter 4, 2 Timothy verse 18. We're going to read it together. Are you there? I said, are you there? One, two, three, four, go. Once, once again, one, two, three, four, go. And finally, for the last time. Can you stand up on your feet? Just stand up. Don't pray. Don't do anything yet. And the Lord shall deliver you from every evil work and will preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom. To him in your life. To him in your family. To him in your office. To him everywhere you go. To the Lord your God, your protector, your provider, be glory forever and ever. Yeah. Raise your voice to the Lord and thank the Lord. No enemy can cut short your life. No enemy can cut short the plan of God in your life, the program of God in your life, the provision of God in your life. This is yours. This is yours. This is yours. The Lord himself, the Lord himself, he has seen it fit to show you the path, the path unto victory, the path unto conquering, and the path unto having and possessing all your inheritance. And as you go back home, remember, the make up power of the Lord is following you. Remember, the provision of the Lord is following after you. Remember, every good thing the Lord has promised you is going to fulfill in your life. And the Lord will preserve you from every evil work. The Lord will deliver you from every evil work. He will break every yoke in your life, every yoke in your family. There's no impossibility in your family anymore. And no enemy has any say in your life. Not even to talk of the final say. They don't have any say in your life. In the day, you'll be an overcomer. In the night, you'll be an overcomer. Everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you'll be an overcomer. Because the Lord is on your side. And every miracle you need, every supply you need, every blessing you need, will be granted unto you. And the Lord will preserve you. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will shield you from every evil word. 
Don't worry about that. That's why the Lord will protect her. Don't be concerned. Oh, this happening to my wife. That's happening to my wife. The Lord will provide for you and your wife will be all right, perfectly all right in Jesus' name. She'll not be taken away from you prematurely. Don't worry about that, husband. The Lord is protecting him. Don't worry about that child. The Lord is protecting him. The Lord is on your side. Don't worry about that job. The Lord has given it to you already. Don't worry about you know miracle child this and that. Everything that concerns you, the Lord will perfect. The Lord will perfect everything that concerns you. You go out of this place with the joy of the Lord, with victory, knowing the Lord Himself. The Lord Himself he has spoken good concerning you. You will prosper. You'll possess, you'll overcome, and the goodness of the Lord will never stop in your life. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. And you can receive abundantly in the sight of the Lord. It is your chance. It is your chance. It is your chance to be everything the Lord has called you to be. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. It is done. It is done. It is done. Accept it. It is done. Miracles, you've got it. Children, you've got there. The job, you've got that job. And the promises of God, they are fulfilled in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I rejoice with you. Why don't you rejoice with yourself? I rejoice with you. I rejoice with you. I rejoice with you. The greatest miracle you ever saw will happen in your life. The greatest thing you ever saw will happen in your life. Testimony upon testimony. Miracle upon miracle. The Lord will fulfill your life in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand and let's confirm that. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for all your people, our pastors, our overseers, our leaders, our singers, our, our workers, everybody, our members and the invitees. Oh Lord, I pray this day will be a turning point in Jesus' name. As we go forth now, we leave all calamity behind. All sicknesses behind. We leave all the pains of the past. We leave behind in Jesus' name. All the poverty will leave that behind in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray your promise will be yes and amen. Your power, your authority will be upon all your people as they go forth in Jesus' name. Enemies are conquered before you. The great enemy, the devil, is paralyzed before you. And all the things that go against your progress, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. Without exception, every brother and every sister, without exception, every boy and every girl, receive the miracle working power of the Lord. Receive the protection of the Lord. Every step you take, everywhere you go, you will experience the fulfillment of the glorious promises of the Lord in your life. In Jesus' name, confirm your miracle upon every life, your blessing upon every life. You will go from strength to strength. You'll be stronger, you'll be wiser, you'll be greater. Your progress will know no limit. And as you go, go in the joy of the Lord. And when you come back, you come back with testimonies. Miracles. Signs and wonders. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.